All right, what's up, everybody? Here we are with episode five of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is called Reign of Sorrows. Man, what can I even say coming off of that last episode, dude? <laughs> that was tragic as fuck, man. Um, I really was not prepared for it. Also because the show just feels, generally speaking, pretty lighthearted. It's a thing that I continue to be surprised about when it comes to anime, because I feel like I had a pretty similar experience watching Demon Slayer, for example, where the characters, the main characters at least, they seem so geared towards a young audience of kids of about, I don't know, you know, 12 years old or whatever. Like, I feel like kids would love characters like Edward and Alphonse, right? And, um... Yeah, the humor that's in there is pretty lighthearted, constantly Edward being called out for being small, this and that. It's fantastic, but then at the same time, you have some absolutely horrible situations playing out. Yeah, the, the worst of which was easily the episode that we just came off of so far, right? Which is uh, Shu Tucker, I think it was called, right? Who literally turned his own daughter there, Nina, uh, and the dog, Alexander yeah combined them into a chimera which he then also revealed that's actually what he had done to his wife before that right that's the whole reason why that chimera wanted to uh, to die literally said like oh i want to die and then and then stopped eating or something right and just uh, ended up killing itself that way <sighs> man messed up as hell but then it, it's it's actually interesting because in, in nina's case she didn't even really have a change of um, her state of mind because she was still very sad when her dad ended up getting killed there in a the moment, right? And she still called out to Edward like, oh, I want to play, I want to play. So it didn't even really seem to affect her, oddly enough. I wonder why it didn't affect her, contrary to her mom. But um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe a detail that <laughs> I'm putting a bit too much focus on. But dude, that's, that, that episode had me all kinds of fucked up, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy when we move on, you know, to whatever comes next again. But... Uh, <laughs> other than that the large overarching storyline i guess that you can talk about i can already kind of feel or see what it's going to be right and it's this huge it's actually kind of like a moral dilemma of the the um well the state alchemists i guess versus the i guess they like i guess all of them are basically alchemists right um however they're just not it's like government versus the rest or whatever versus the, the people that defected i guess right um, simultaneously, I do feel like Lust, for example, and, and Gluttony, you know, those two. Yeah, they probably never really were part of like the... the they were never state alchemists, I'm going to assume, right? Um, they're probably like a faction of their own that are trying to have all these other alchemists like join them and stuff, right? Basically for to further their own agenda, I would guess. But still, it's like, it's interesting because it's, it's what I mentioned already and I'm getting some real... I hope people don't mind me saying it, but I'm kind of... Like, I'm definitely getting Attack on Titan vibes from the storyline so far. Uh, and, you know, maybe I'm, 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 people are going to tell me, like, oh, you're getting your expectations up way too high or something. But, I mean, what I, what I, what I mean by it is that um, you have these sides, but I, I wouldn't necessarily rule it out that the other side, the bad side, quote unquote, could actually end up being pretty rightful in their objectives too you get what i'm saying because there was the guy we got introduced to i think last episode who had the huge axe on his head right and he came to kill shu tucker there who after doing that experiment with the chimeras this and that um like i guess the the state the the government had just sort of locked him up there waiting for his trial or something right he was gonna get a trial and then the guy with the axe came in there killed him and basically said like oh yeah um i forget exactly how he worded it Maybe it was actually mentioned a little earlier in the episode, but it doesn't matter. But like, you've defied the code of state alchemists or whatever about doing everything in the interest of the people. That's kind of how he had worded it, right? And so it's clear. And again, this is the thing. The government talks about this even to Edward. Like, oh, maybe in the future you're going to be expected to do some pretty fucked up things yourself. You know what I'm saying? And so it's clear that like, there is a moral line here that the state alchemists are willing to cross sometimes. Um, and I'm not saying that that was the case here, in, uh, you know, with, with Shu Tucker. Again, he was going to face some type of trial, right? And um, I'm sure he would have been punished. But the question is, would he have gotten the right punishment? And therefore, what the guy with the axe did, taking, <clears throat> taking law into his own hands, I guess, um, I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do, of course, right? Uh, but I do question, like, what would the punishment for Shu Tucker have been 
had the guy, you know, not showed up to kill him already. You get what I'm saying? Like, maybe the guy actually has a, has a fair point. And, you know, like, I would actually agree with him that state alchemists are crossing certain lines that shouldn't be crossed. That's still what we're going to have to find out about, right? Like, we don't know what, what these guys are going to be expecting Edward and Alphonse to do moving forward. But I feel like there might actually be good reason to believe that some things I definitely won't be in agreement with. And so I'm very fascinated to see, you know, where we go from here and how that's all going to be elaborated on. Like I said, that that's not to say that some of the characters we got introduced to, like, I mean, obviously there was the guy in, in episode three, um, the, the priest, I forget his name now, blanking out on it, but like he was, I mean, he just wanted world domination or whatever, right? Like typical evil villain, uh, you know, like, yeah, I'm not going to be on your side. But that was, for example, the Freezing Alchemist in the first episode who, who already called this out actually to Edward. Like, are you not aware of what they're making people do this and that? You would be on my side is what he literally said, right? And I found that fascinating to see because, um, yeah, what if, what if they have a point? Once again, when it comes to, uh, uh, to lust and to gluttony, yeah, that gives me all vibes that like, okay, they're not, they don't have the same moral uh, code either. So once again, just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that like all the all the villains are going to be able to be rooted for or something at all, but uh, we're going to find out, guys. With that being said, if you enjoy my reactions to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, then of course you can already watch the next eight episodes straight away over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Over there, we're already going to be on episode 13, so go and check it out, guys. Your support is very much appreciated and allows me to make these videos in the first place, so keep that in mind. And then with that being said, let's dive into episode 5. Flashback again. Oh, maybe we're gonna actually... Well, she's, she's mentioning the dad a second time, so... I wonder when we're gonna see him or learn more about him. Right. Jesus Christ. Oh, what? Oh, he's having visions, dude. He's having visions right now, yeah. All the shit that went wrong in his life already. I feel like this might already be too much for me to handle, to be honest. <laughs> if I was him. I'd be calling it quits right about now. Uh, oh shit, they're about to be told that they died. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. So are we going after the axe guy? You're gonna get even more nightmares, dude. She's not wrong about that. Okay, we're going back to this. Little speech he gave. Putting the people against the state. Oh shit. Well, some are catching on. Yeah, who who are the real pawns here? Maybe they're all pawns. Yeah. Here she comes again. Oh, so she was just talking about him. Oh my god. Dude. I thought, but I thought they had killed this one. Oh, oh, I get it now. Jesus, I was so confused it was somebody else. I was going to say, because they killed him. I was like so thrown off guard by that for a second, like... Oh, 
鋼のおちびさんも滞在中らしいよ鋼の仕事の邪魔してくれたのは腹が立つけど死なせるわけにはいかないわね大事な人柱だし An important sacrifice? Dude, what are they teasing? それはこっちで何とかするで、なんて言ったっけ例のやつスカウ傷の男ああ Okay, yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to call him then 俺たちはそう呼んでる国家錬金術師ばかり中央で五人国内ですと住人が被害に遭っております5日前にはグランのじいさんもやられてるうん、right, we saw that 兵器厳正と軍隊格闘の第一人者だぞそれくらいやばいやつだってことさ、yeah. ここらで有名どころといったらタッカーとお前さんだけだろまずいアドワーズ俺たちの信じる錬金術ってなんだろう So what, they figured that's yeah, they're coming after a d w a r d now 錬金術とは物質のうちに存在する法則と流れを知り分解し再構築すること分かってるつもりだったでも分かってなかった。Okay, do you know then? だから母さん。そして今もどうにもならないことをどうにかできないかと考えてる。Oh man. I mean, I don't really think this can be reverted anymore in any way, right? Is he gonna start questioning? Like, is he gonna start questioning his own superiors a bit, or what is this? What is this leading to? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's all the small things that you notice. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck is he's, he's right here. Oh, he's. Wow, he came straight to kill him. Is he coming to kill him though? I mean, he, he did try to attack him, so... Well, actually, has Edward already broken the code as well by doing the transmutation? You know, that makes sense that he has to pay for his for his crime the way this guy sees it. Oh shit! The slide. <laughs> I was gonna say you've made plenty of enemies, <laughs> as many as you can. If there are creators like you? Okay, so he sees himself as a destroyer or what? For a second I was like, he called him a creator. That reminded me of the god scene in episode 2. But I don't think that's what he meant with it. Damn. <laughs> he didn't even know that. Oh shit. That's the uh, Assassin's Creed blade. <laughs> Oh shit, well, he did what he said. Literally. That's a good question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just because he. Well, I mean, didn't Al perform the transmutation ritual at first, too, though? They did it together. Wow. He's not, he's not actually going to be sacrificing himself here though. What? 
Okay. Oh, they arrived right in time. <laughs> Voluntarily. Oh, she's not letting it happen, though. What the fuck did she... Yo, <laughs> she just tackled him. So he wasn't hit. Wow. <laughs> well, as the flame alchemist, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> How did he not figure that? That's his biggest weakness. Oh, shit. He better do some flexing afterwards if he takes him down. Yeah, wasn't even aware of that, Edward. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> He's already showing off, dude. Why, why do you think so? Mm. Okay, no reconstruction. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, he's just, again, like, they're all alchemists. It's just that these ones go up against the state ones. Because the state ones are willing to take it a step further, right? That's what's being teased the whole time. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, he's from Isval. I I'm still not really sure what Isval is. But they mentioned the war before. <laughs> he has a family, man. Pseudo humans. What the fuck? Oh, man. I guess he also didn't appreciate him literally being willing to, yeah, give himself up there. Mm. If you really want to piss him off, just say that he's small. That's what Alphonse cares about. Living. No matter what measures are necessary to achieve it. Oh, here we go. A race of people. Okay, and Isvala is their god, I guess. I see. Oh, 
Ooh. Okay. Wait, but was it really like that tiny of a region there? Holy shit. Yeah, okay. This is starting to make a lot of sense now, knowing this history. A lot has happened here already. Okay, so there's still like a few out there, I guess. Yeah, why would he go after Edward, though? He wasn't exactly looking to use Edward to pull him to his side either or something, so... They're gonna find a way to uh, repair themselves. Mechanic. Oh, who's their mechanic? Well, would that would that be Winry? I'm honestly not sure. It, it could be, but probably not. Well, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you won't be missing out on the next reaction. And the next eight episodes are already available straight away on Patreon, which is linked on top of the description. Yeah, that last sequence definitely put a lot of things into perspective for me, and it shows that this 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 country, this region, I still don't even really know what it's called, but like the overarching, I think they showed us a map in the very first episode, and it's like a pretty circular space, right? With a lot of regions within, and then you had the central region, I think, where the first episode took place. But now we focused on Isval, or at least we were told about it, and, you know, apparently, yeah, that's something that... Um, well, they said that basically some type of civil war had been sparked there after a kid got killed, I think, accidentally or whatever. But, like, um, basically that became this huge uproar, right? Like an uprising within the, um, yeah, within the public. And it actually expanded itself pretty massively. And so that's why the state then had the their state alchemists, you know, well, bringing back uh, order, I guess, right? In the whole, in the whole region. So still, there's a couple leftovers here, and this guy is one of them. So he is from Isval, but it's, yeah, it's weird because it's kind of what Edward, of course, talks about, right? Like, okay, but how does that make sense with him going after me? I had nothing to do with that. And that clearly has to do with his religious beliefs more, right? Which I guess all the Ish, the people from Isval, um, yeah, well, I think that was mentioned. They all had those kinds of beliefs, I guess, right? They believed in their, well, they, they literally had like a specific god, um, I think that's what the whole region was even named after, right? That's what they basically said. But still, so, yeah, they are very, I mean, again, it, it, it just brings us back to the conversation that I've been highlighting already, that, like, it's clearly government versus uh, versus religion, right? State versus church, whatever you want to call it. That's, that's the real battle that's playing out here. And it's actually fascinating because... Again, I mean, I'm not saying that there that there is going to be like a, a a good and a wrong side, morally speaking. It's it's actually yeah, pretty understandable that the guy the guy talks. Well, it's clear that the guy what he has against Edward, I would think, is like the fact that he heard about the transmutation, and so that's not something you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to bring people back from death. Um, that's how he sees it. It's like a religious view that he has, I guess, right? Whereas Edward doesn't. It's 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 weird because Edward, of course, doesn't feel that way. Alphonse definitely doesn't feel that way because Alphonse keeps talking about we need to bring our bodies back. We need to, um, even if there there would have been a way to to rescue Nina, we should be finding that. You know, maybe it's still possible. Who knows? But um, yeah, clearly they are willing to break those rules. Let's say right, um, and it's that that reconstruction part of the three terms or whatever that belong to alchemy that they talked about, which they don't mind, but then that guy definitely does. Um, still, you can simultaneously see that it's weighing on Edward a little bit too, right? Because he, he is having those nightmares. And I guess, I feel like he is going to find out over the course of this show that like, mm, well, maybe, yeah, maybe there's only really uh, problems that come from doing all of this or from trying to achieve this, right? Like you're only going to create more tragedy, I guess, or you're only... Maybe the transmutation isn't even really possible. Who knows, right? Like they're trying to find a way to make that all happen, but is it really something you wanna you wanna seek and go after? That's I think the big question for now. But um, 
yeah all in all this was a great episode and i'm very much looking forward to seeing where we go from here guys i hope you all enjoyed my reaction and review to episode five of full metal alchemist brotherhood if you did the next eight episodes are available straight away over on my patreon page which is linked on top of the description over there we're already going to be on episode 13 go and check it out full length reactions will be up there too and then with that being said i want to thank you all a lot for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you back in the next episode